Hello my little learners. In this video we will boost our learning by discussing the question and answers of the chapter Diversity in the Living World for class 6. I hope you all have already watched the explanation videos of this chapter. If not, do check them out first. Now let's begin. Let's read the first question. Here are two types of seeds. What differences do you find among the roots and leaf venation of their plants? First seed is wheat and second seed is kidney beans. So to compare the roots and leaf venation of wheat and kidney beans, we must first identify what type of seeds they are. We know wheat is a monocot seed and kidney beans are dicot seeds. Now let's analyze the differences based on that. So students, to answer this question, we use a simple trick, Dirata and Mopafi. Let me explain what it means. Dirata stands for Dicot Reticulate Venation Taproot System and Mopafi stands for Monocot Parallel Venation Fibrous Root System. Now apply this trick to the question. Wheat is a monocot seed, so it has parallel venation and fibrous roots. Kidney beans are dicot seeds, so they have reticulate venation and tap roots. Let's read second question. Names of some animals are given below. Group them based on their habitats. Write the names of aquatic animals in the area marked A and terrestrial animals in the area marked B. Enter the names of animals living in both habitats in part C. And the names are horse, dolphin, frog, sheep, crocodile, squirrel, whale, earthworm, pigeon, tortoise. So students, the place where animals live is called their habitat. So let's classify the animals based on their habitats. Animals that live only in water are dolphin and whale. Animals that live only on land are horse, sheep, squirrel, earthworm and pigeon and animals that can live both on land and in water are frog, crocodile and tortoise. The third question is Manu's mother maintains a kitchen garden. One day she was digging out radish from the soil. She told Manu that radish is a kind of root. Examine a radish and write what type of root it is. What type of venation would you observe in the leaves of radish plant? So students, radish is a tap root as it has one main thick root that grows deep into the soil. The radish that we eat is actually the swollen part of this tap root used by the plant to store food. So radish has a tap root system. And we know that if a plant has a taproot system, its leaves show reticulate venation. So radish has a taproot system and the leaves of radish show reticulate venation. Let's read question number 4. Look at the image of a mountain goat and a goat found in the plains. Point out the similarities and differences between them. What are the reasons for these differences? So the similarities between a mountain goat and goat found in plains are both are herbivorous, have four legs, horns and similar body structure and both give birth to young ones. And the differences are mountain goat has strong legs, rough hooves, thick fur adapted for climbing and cold while plain goat have normal legs, simple hooves Thin fur adapted for flat and warm areas. Reason for these differences is adaptations to their specific habitats for survival. A mountain goat have evolved features like grip enhancing hooves and thick fur to survive the cold and rocky mountains. While plain goats have less need for such adaptations. So they have simpler body features suitable for warm, flat environments. Let's read question number 5. Group the following animals into two groups based on any feature other than those discussed in the chapter. Cow, cockroach, pigeon, bat, tortoise, whale, 
fish grasshopper and lizards let's group the animals based on the ability to fly group 1 animals that can fly are pigeon bat grasshopper cockroach these animals have wings and can fly some only for short distances like grasshoppers and cockroaches but can fly group 2 animals that cannot fly are cow whale fish tortoise lizard these animals do not have wings and cannot fly now let's group the animals based on their mode of reproduction so group 1 has animals that lay eggs are cockroach pigeon fish grasshopper tortoise and lizard and group 2 animals that give birth to young ones are cow bat and whale we can also group the animals based on the presence of back has group 1 animals with a backbone are called vertebrates these animals have a well developed vertebral column that is backbone and animals are cow pigeon bat tortoise whale fish and lizard and group 2 has animals without a backbone and are called invertebrates these animals do not have a backbone cockroach and grasshopper so students i have classified these animals based on th- based on their ability to fly mode of reproduction and presence or absence of backbone let's continue and read the sixth question as the population grows and people want more comfortable lives forests are being cut down to meet various needs how can this affect our surroundings how do you think we can address this challenge so students i will show you two types of answers for better understanding one is the short type answer quick and to the point the other is the long type answer detailed and with full explanation this will help you learn how to write answers based on the marks and question type in your exams so the short type answer is cutting down forest to meet the growing needs of people can have serious negative effects on our surroundings cutting forest affects biodiversity climate soil and rainfall to solve this we must plant trees protect forest reduce waste and spread awareness about living in harmony with nature and the long type answer is cutting down forest to meet the growing needs of people can have serious negative effects on our surroundings how deforestation affects our surroundings loss of biodiversity so many animals birds and insects lose their homes and may become endangered or extinct soil erosion without trees soil is washed away easily by rain and wind reducing soil fertility climate change trees absorb carbon dioxide cutting them increase co2 in the air contributing to global warming decrease in rainfall forests help in cloud formation their removal may reduce rainfall in that region floods and droughts trees hold rain water without them there are more floods in rainy season and droughts in dry season pollution increases trees clean the air fewer trees means more pollute these how can we address this challenge by planting more trees start large scale tree plantation drives save existing forests protect forests through laws and strict enforcement promote sustainable living use eco friendly materials and reduce waste spread awareness educate people about the importance of tree recycle and reuse use recycled paper avoid plastic and reduce uses of forest based products use land wisely encourage vertical constructions in cities to save space and avoid cutting forest for housing let's read question number 7 analyze the flow chart what can be examples of a and b 
So let's analyze the flow chart step by step. Plant, yes. Does it have leaves? Yes. Does it have reticulate venation? If yes, A. If no, B. So A is a plant with reticulate venation and B is a plant without reticulate venation, that is with parallel venation. And we know by the trick that a plant with reticulate venation are dicot beans and examples of dicot plants are kidney bean plants, mango tree, radish plants, etc. And B is the plant with parallel venation and we know plant with parallel venation are monocot plants and examples of monocot plants are wheat, maize, etc. So A can be a kidney bean plant or a mango tree or B can be wheat or maize. Now let's read question number 8. Raj argues with his friend Sanjay that Gudhal plant is a shrub. What questions can Sanjay ask for clarification? So if Raj says that Gudhal is a shrub, then Sanjay can ask questions to understand why Raj thinks so and to clarify the features of shrub. Questions Sanjay can ask are, what is the height of the Gudhal plant? As shrubs are medium sized plant, usually between 1 to 3 meters tall. Does the Gudhal plant have a single main stem or many branches from the base? Because shrubs usually have multiple woody stems growing near the ground. Is the stem of the Gudhal plant woody or soft? Because shrubs have hard woody stems but are not as thick as trees. Is the Gudhal plant bigger than a herb but smaller than a tree? Shrubs are generally in between herbs and trees in size. Does the Gurhal plant live for several years? Because shrubs are usually perennial and live for more than one season. So Sanjay can ask about the height, stem type, branching pattern and lifespan of the Gurhal plant to clarify whether it fits the characteristics of a shrub or not. Let's read question number 9. Based on the information in the table, find out examples of these plants for each group. Group A, dicot type of seed, type of root is taproot and group B has monocot type of seed and fibrous roots. So let's complete the table first. Examples of a dicot type of seed and taproot is bean, pea, mustard, radish and example of group B are wheat, rice, maize. So other similarities of plants in group A that is dicots with tap roots. The plants in group A have reticulate venation which means the veins in their leaves form a net like pattern and they also have two cotyledons in their seeds. So the seed can be easily split into two equal parts like in other similarities of plants in group B that is monocots with fibrous roots. So plants in group B have parallel venation where the veins in the leaves run side by side without crossing. Their seeds have only one cotyledon. So the seed does not split into two parts as seen in wheat or maize. Now let's read question number 10. Observe the labeled part of a duck in the picture given below. What differences do you observe in the feet of the duck compared to the other birds? Which activity would the duck be able to perform? It, the feet of a duck are webbed, meaning its toes are connected by a thin skin-like membrane. This special structure helps the duck swim easily as the webbed feet act like pedals pushing the water backward and allowing the duck to move forward smoothly. This is an important adaptation for aquatic life. On the other hand, the feet of a pigeon are not webbed. Instead, pigeons have clawed toes which help them to perch on trees, wires or ledges. Their feet are adapted for gripping and walking, not for swimming. So in summary, ducks have webbed feet for swimming while pigeons have clawed feet for perching and walking. That's it my little learners. I hope you have understood 
all the answers we discussed today. Keep revising and keep learning. See you next time in another educational video.